We are on the June Odd 8 exam, page 13 of the top half. Directions for questions 62 through 76. Record your answers on the spaces on the answer sheet. Base 62 through 64 on the following information. A kicked soccer ball has an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. And it's flying at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal level ground. Neglect air friction. First one, question 62. Calculate the magnitude of the vertical component of the ball's initial velocity. Show all work, including the expression, the equation, and substitution with units for two points. Well, I tell you, when I do these, I like to have a picture. There's the ground. We kick the ball 25 meters per second at 40 degrees. Let me check to make sure that's right. 25 meters per second, 40 degrees. So velocity initial is 25 meters per second. And the angle is 40 degrees. Now they want the vertical component. This is the horizontal component. It goes along the horizon. And this would be the vertical component. So they're looking for the velocity in the y-axis. Hmm. And in our mechanics formulas, we have any vector's y component is equal to any vector times the sine of the angle. x is a times the cosine of the, th the angle. We want velocity in the y. So velocity in the y-axis is equal to the velocity times the sine of the angle. Velocity in the y-axis is equal to 25 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. Velocity in the y-axis is equal to calculator time to find the sine of 40 degrees. I got the sine of 40 degrees being 0.642. I multiply that by 25 meters per second. Uh -huh. 16.06 meters per second. Question 63. Calculate the maximum height the ball reaches above its initial position. I want you to show all your work, including the equation and substitution with units. All right, so we know that the velocity initial, and this is in the y-axis, because that's the only thing that's going to let it go up. It's going to be 16.06 meters per second. Now, why doesn't it keep going up forever? Well, eventually, it stops. So it has a velocity final equal to zero. Why does it stop? Because acceleration due to gravity is pulling it downwards. And they want to know the distance. They want to know the distance that it travels. Let's see if we've got enough here. So we go to our mechanics equations, and I got this one. Velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2AD. So let's write that one down. Velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 acceleration times the distance, or the height we go to. So I want to get distance by itself. Well, first thing I'm going to do is subtract uh, velocity initial from both sides. So velocity final squared minus velocity initial squared is equal to 2 acceleration times distance. Then divide both sides of the equation by 2 acceleration. And that's the equation for distance. Look at this. Velocity final is 0. So velocity final squared is also 0. So we can say... Uh, that minus velocity initial squared divided by 2 times the acceleration will produce the distance. Now keep in mind that the negative, in this case, refers to direction. Velocity um, and negative acceleration. We could throw the negative acceleration down there. Um, but we, don't worry about the negative at this point. It's a directional vector thing. But we can plug in our numbers. So uh, 16.06 meters per second 
squared divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And meters per second squared, and this is going to be meters squared per second squared, so we'll be left with meters, which is distance, which is handy. And so now we get our, four, our uh, calculator. We need a calculator now. And this is just a little point when doing math problems like this. I've got 1606 plus all the decimals already stored in my calculator for my last problem. So I'm going to square it and then divide it by parentheses 2 times 9.8 and parentheses. And my answer is going to be about 13 meters. 13.17 meters. Total distance, 13.17 meters. Now let's think about this. It starts off at 16 meters per second, and it's going to go to zero. So that's going to take it, uh, I don't know, less than two seconds. And uh, so the average speed for that would be about eight. And eight for two seconds would be about 16, a little bit less than that. So that looks about right. Looks like a good number. And now question 64. On the diagram in your answer booklet, sketch the path of the ball's flight from its initial position at point P until it returns to level ground. And they want a point for you to draw a picture of this thing happening. Well, it's interesting. They did research and they showed that very young children uh, had a better understanding than high school kids because in high school you watch the uh, Roadrunner uh, and the coyote, and the coyote gets in the middle and he stops and holds up a sign and then falls. And very young children have been throwing stuff off their high chair for years, and so they, they understand that it follows a parabolic arc. It goes up, it reaches the highest point there, and then it lands again. And, um, and that would be the path. I don't know, maybe put an arrow over here. I don't know if it helps you at all, but that's what I got. I think that's going to get me a point.